the minute my wife saw this modern hat rack design, uh, she was intrigued and gave me the go ahead to build it and we can put it up on the wall, but I ran into some areas that made it impossible for me to do because it was a little beyond my skill level. All of this design is taken from Garage Works a YouTube station and so I suggest you watch that YouTube first and then you can see my workarounds to make it a little simpler. So one of the first alterations I made is this is a two foot long board that I got and I bought one about five inches wide and I ripped it to exactly four and a half inches. Now I needed to put this bevel on the edge but I didn't have uh, the router setup that was shown in the other video. So what I used is my table saw, set it at a 30 degree angle, and you can see I have some fingerboards here to keep it tight in. And while it was at that angle, I held it next to the fence. I'm standing on the wrong side right now, but so you can see it. And I ran it through the blade. And you can see this is the angle I got. I got a nice 30 degree angle and that's what we use for this particular hat rack. So there it is, right there. Now, to get the individual pieces, I used the same dimension shown in the earlier video. One and a half inch rip for the black walnut. So I went right through there, one and a half inch rip. And then to get the oak pieces, I set the rip fence at two inches and made rips like that. Now the next problem I ran into is I wanted to just take a little bit of this edge off so it wouldn't be sharp and splinter. And I have a router, but I don't have a router table, so I worked up a quick fix on that problem. Let's take a look at it. So to make myself a router table, I took my port cable router, just took these three screws out, removed this as a template to use and then I set it on this old shelving material and took a marker and marked where the three holes go and the center point here. I took a boring bit and shot it right through this area and then on the flip side you can see I took and routered out a space big enough to set my router plate into. So if you can imagine this, now what I'll do is on the back side, I take this part of my port cable router, line it up with the holes, and then screw it down good and tight. And then this piece just rotates right in there. I can adjust the height as it pops out on the other side and lock it in. And it worked just like a dream. So if you can imagine that router bit coming up here and setting it just right, I was able to take my piece of wood and run it through that bit and continue running it through and basically holding it down, going all the way around and cutting and running it right through with one sweeping cut rather than trying to clamp it again and again. You have to be very careful with this because if it grabs here and blows the wood away, your fingers can go into that blade. So you're always keeping good down pressure and a good grip and your fingers away from the spinning blade. Now after having cut those long pieces to one and a half and two inch respectively widths, I was able to go to um, just a chop saw and cut these lengths down to six inches. Now you can see these are rounded on the edges. I laid them down and I found the pivot point was exactly where this crease is here. So I ran an aluminum pipe, not a pipe, a rod, through the holes in here and lined it up perfectly. And you might wonder, how did I get those holes right where I wanted them? Well, I carefully measured and had an inch below here and I think it was an inch above here and when it looked just right all the way through I drew a line right at that pivot point and then I went to drill. Notice I only drill halfway through on this one and halfway through on the other end but all the way through 
on all the middle pieces. Let's go take a look and see how the drilling was done. I call this a poor man's clamp, but it is just perfect for jobs like this. You can see this clamp, instructions for making this are on another one of my websites, but you can see I have an angle cut here, and that's the same angle cut through here. I slice through a double piece of wood, and this slides right there. And then I can take a piece of wood that I want to grab very tightly and get it right in the right spot. So I'm going to hit exactly where I want it. And then to lock it in, I'll take a little wooden mallet and tap it. That thing's there to stay. Now I can come down and bore it through. And I can even, if I want, make a line there. And all the walnut pieces would be on that same line that's on my holding device. Drill right through, pull it up, and then to get it out I just give it a little tap like that. It releases it, blow out the sawdust, and I'm ready for the next one. If you don't have one of these, make one because it's going to come in valuable at times. So now I run into my biggest problem. I have this beautiful hat rack, but I don't know how to hang it on the wall because I don't have the skill level to do what was done in the previous video. So here's my solution. I have this hole running through here and I can run this rod all the way through. Well, I'm going to run this rod through and then tape these down so they don't move at all. I'm going to double screw these from the back side so these are all held in place. I'm going to take this hole that only goes part of the way through and I'm going to very carefully, putting tape here, run it all the way through. Then I'm going to take this and remove all the dark colored wood. These are going to be locked in place by screws. I'm going to go to my wall and find at least one stud, pre-drill a hole through, countersink a hole. I'm going to take a large screw and go into the stud. Now I can't find a second stud in this light colored wood, so I'm going to put a toggle and I'm going to anchor it on there. Now I've got it anchored on, I'm going to very carefully slip my aluminum rod back through the holes, threading it all the way through, leaving this one off, threading it all the way through, and as I've threaded it through, I will have a little bit sticking out here on the end. I apologize, that won't be sticking out because it's screwed down already. So I'm going to thread it all the way through, and when I get them all threaded in there, I'll push it in until it seats itself very well. And to finish it off, I hope this works. I'll show you the results in a, just a minute here. I bought some plug cutters, and I got a 3 8 inch plug cutter. And on my drill press, you can see I, I made out of the same kind of oak some 3 8 inch plugs. After I get that rod in there, I'm going to take one of these plugs, I'm going to shove it in the hole and glue it in there, sand it down, and stain it, and I think it will be invisible to any but a trained eye. We'll see. So you can see what I've done here. I decided where my blocks are going to go. <coughs> I'm going to have screws come into the center of them, so now I'm going to drill pilot holes, two of them, all the way down and the pilot holes are almost going to be as big as the screw because I just really want it to bite in here. I'm going to apply a little bit of woodworking glue here so the screw will tightly hold it into the glue and both of them will be working as a team to hold this to the wall. So now we're coming down on these pilot holes and I'm coming through the good side of the wood and I know I'm blowing out the back side but I'm going to countersink that And here we go with the counter sinking. I'll just do one of them to show you. I'm coming down and I'm going down deep enough to where I know I can hide that screw head. I'm going to do that with every one now. You can see here that I've taken several cuts through the plug that I cut with the plug cutter and I ended up with these little discs, a half inch one and a three eighths that I can plug into holes and this is the one I'm going to plug into the rod hole. So, sorry about that. So we got the rod hole um, and a couple of other ones and we'll see how that works.
you. This is about an hour and a half later after uh, bungling a few things. I now have a screw hole here. It's tied into a stud and a toggle here. So my next plan is to thread the walnut pieces with a rod going through them and then over here putting a plug here and I'll plug these two before I get started. So we'll take a look in a few moments. There's a quick look with the oak plug over the screw hole which probably won't show because it's going to be behind a piece of walnut anyway but there's a try. So, so far so good. You can see what I'm doing. I'm taking these dark blocks one by one and I'm threading, just twisting a little bit back and forth and I'm threading the next one in and when I get it in there I shoot it through until I get to the next location and I can feel it with my finger and this idea seems to be working pretty well. I'm happy with it. You can see these are working just like this. As I get to the end it looks like a little tapping is needed to force this through the hole. So I'll just so I went ahead and drove that um, tube in and now I'll just go ahead and try and keep my grain good and tap in my There's the final plugging and it's um, not perfect. You can see a little ring, but it's better than a piece of metal sticking out. And when you get away like this, you can see we got our hat rack. And I can go ahead when I need to use something, pull these down or set them back up as need be. I'm very impressed. I wish it were my idea. <laughs> Good luck trying to do this.